What's up everybody, JJ here, and today we're gonna to be calibrating the E-steps or extruder steps on a 3D printer. So Polymaker recently sent over a bunch of filaments. This isn't sponsored by Polymaker in any way, but they did send over some different filaments for me to test out and make some videos on. And I thought this was a great example to show off why you need your extruder to be calibrated when you're trying to calibrate in new filaments. Or if in general, you're just going into some deep diving on your calibrating your 3D printer. A lot of time the stock setting will be fine and there are other tweaks to get around a miscalibrated extruder. But if you're really trying to go into a deep dive of calibrating your 3D printer, or you're trying to get a new filament to get working correctly, it can really help to get your extruder correctly calibrated. So today for demonstration, since this is a small printer I can have on the desk right here, this is direct drive using Clipper, but I will explain the differences for Marlin and for a Bowdens type setup. So this should cover everything you need to get your extruder calibrated correctly. This isn't something you need to do very often. Usually it's once per printer or maybe after a couple years of solid printing. If you notice things getting a little bit off, you might try recalibrating it. Usually you calibrate it once and you would only need to recalibrate it if you change the motors, change the stepper motor drivers. If you really change the hardware involved, then you recalibrate it. But other than that, you should be fine. So I've got my coffee ready. Look at this mug. It's got various cats in all the different series of Star Trek uniforms. Love it, but we've got coffee ready. Let's get right into it. So I've got the top hat off so we have good access to the extruder. But the first thing you're gonna need here is a computer connection to your 3D printer. Whether that's OctoPrint if you're still using Marlin firmware, or Fluid or Mainsail if you're using Clipper firmware, or if you don't have any web control setup, you can use a USB cable connected to your 3D printer, and then use something like Pronterface or Cura to get a terminal where you can type in G-code and it sends it to the printer. I'm gonna be using Fluid since that is the web interface I have set up for this 3D printer. But the first thing we're gonna do hardware-wise is remove any friction after the extruder. So in a direct drive extruder like this, remove your nozzle. In a Bowden type setup, you can just remove the Bowden tube from right after the extruder. That way we're isolating our calibration to just the section of the motor and the gearing to move filament forward. We're not calibrating any friction of your extruder or hot end or all the other parts in the system. And then once you know your extruder is working correctly on different filaments, you can calibrate your flow rate, your temperature, a bunch of other things you can do, but this is purely extruder calibration right now. So now that it's up to temperature, I've got the silicone sock off and I got my handy tandy nozzle remover here. You can just pull your nozzle off so since normally when you ever you pull the filament out, there's going to be a little bit left in the hot end and which makes it impossible to extrude straight through there. We are going to have the hot end at 200 Celsius while we're pushing filament through it. So now load your filament in until it's in the gears. In this case, I lock it down and we can mark off the distance. So you can use a ruler or some calipers for this. Either way really works well and a Sharpie to mark your filament. I like to mark 120 millimeters away, and then we'll try to extrude 100 millimeters. Just sort of mark it with a Sharpie. It's pretty easy, especially easier on a lighter filament than a darker one. But you wanna measure more than you're trying to extrude because if it over extrudes, you won't be able to see the mark anymore. So in whatever computer interface you're using, go to the console, and the first command you're gonna send is an M83. That moves your positioning system into a relative positioning, so we can tell it just increased by a little bit. Then you send G1, E100, F100. This command tells it to extrude 100 millimeters of filament at a fairly slow rate. So I got another error that you may run into, the max extrude only distance. The default value in Clipper is 50, so you could send just two 50 millimeter retraction commands or you can go into your config file and increase that value. So under your extruder definition, you can add whatever distance you want. I'm gonna bump it up to 100 because for calibrating your extruder, I like 100 save and exit. Now we should be able to send that same command. So now you can measure the distance from your mark on the filament to wherever you started from. And I'm measuring right at 18 millimeters. So the reason I put this whole part before any of the other parts is because if you were to measure a perfect 20 millimeters right there, that means your extruder is pretty spot on calibrated. You don't need to move forward with any of the other steps. 
but since I did measure 18 and not 20 millimeters, we can move forward. So to do our calibration, we need to figure out what the current extruder value is on our printer. If you're using Marlin firmware, you can send the command M503. That will give you a printout of a bunch of different config settings. Then look for the line that starts with M92. Somewhere at the end of that line should be a value that starts with an E and then be a three digit number with maybe some decimals after it. That's your current extruder value. If you're using Clipper, it's a little bit easier to find it. You just go into your printer.config file, go down to your extruder settings, and then since a recent update, we're gonna be using rotation distance as the value that will be changing. So in Clipper, we do need to run this equation to get our E step value. So E steps, equals full steps per rotation times micro steps divided by rotation distance. And rotation distance will be the value we're actually going to be changing. So our current value is 143.95. In Marlin, it will be that full E step value. So here is sort of the big equation I've created, combining a bunch of these smaller equations that some websites will give you for how to calculate this value. It's basically a ratio percentage-wise how far off your current value is from what you expected it to go. So you take your current E value, times it by 100 millimeters we expected, and then divide it by your 120 millimeters we measured minus what length was left at the end. So this 14,394.96 divided by 102 will give us a new value of 141.12. Then we can work that equation backwards to get our new rotation distance of 22.67. So for Clipper, you can just plug in the value right here as your new setting, then click Save and Restart. That reboots the firmware with our new value. But in Marlin, the command to load in your new value is M92, put a space, and then E, and your new number. Hit Enter to send that command, and then send command M500 to save your new settings to commit it to memory. So now that we have our new value loaded and stored in here, it's important to rerun that calibration to make sure your math was correct, your measurements were correct, and make sure the whole process worked as we were expecting it. If you are using Marlin, I would recommend just go ahead and reboot your entire printer to make sure that value really got saved to memory correctly. So first I'm gonna heat up the hot end real quick. And while that's happening, we can go ahead and mark off our new 120 millimeters. It can also help if you're having trouble holding all these things at the same time, hold it up and mark it, and then re-measure it without trying to do the marking and remember exactly how far it is. So in this case, I really think it's pretty spot on. The bottom of the mark is right at 120, but if I'd marked it and then I re-measure it and it looks closer to 119, then you can just use that 119 value in your equation instead of the 120. That can help you get a little bit more precise on your values. So now the extruder is up to temperature. We're gonna send that same G1 E100 F100 command. And it takes about a minute to extrude. You do want it to run nice and slowly here. You don't want to test the limits of how fast you can run things or have errors with skipping gears or slipping filament in the gears or anything like that. And now we can come back and remeasure and that is spot on right at 20 millimeters. That means it extruded the correct 100 millimeters correctly. And once you get that correct filament extrusion value, that means you're done. Your extruder is calibrated and it should be good for years to come. But now just because your extruder is calibrated correctly does not mean you'll get perfectly extruded prints every single time. There are a lot of other factors that go into creating a good quality print but now you know the issues will not be your extruder motor. If you are getting random over or under extrusions, if it's something that's suddenly changed, I would say check your nozzle, see if there's a clog in there. If you're using a cheap one, maybe just try changing it out. If you haven't changed out your brass nozzle for six months to a year, definitely just change that one out. Always keep some spares on hand very useful to have around. Another thing to check is make sure you're running at the correct temperature. Running a temperature tower will let you know if you're running at the correct temperature, not too hot, not too cold, to get that right extrusion value. And your one final tool for fixing under or over extrusions, if nothing else has worked, changing your flow rate. That's kind of your big hammer to just knock the problem out of the way. It would be better to work through all the other settings, but your flow rate it just says, hey, push more filament, or push less filament. And so sometimes you might need to tweak that value 
off of 100% if things are just not flowing correctly. But anyway, I hope this has helped people out if you're having issues with calibrating your extruder or if you've never calibrated your extruder and you really wanna deep dive into fully calibrating your printer, this is a great place to start. And as always, let me know if you have any questions down below or also put tips down there if there's something I missed that you think is a really useful tip for calibrating your extruder. Let us know in the comments down below. It really helps people out. And while you're down there, hitting that like and subscribe button really helps me out and really keeps this channel growing and helping more people. But anyway, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next one.